Should this be closer? Meh. I guess that's fine. Uh, yeah, what up? Maybe I'll lower this. I don't know. I never know how to how to fucking do things. Wow, I got three people. This is the most I own alive ever. Shout out to y'all three for joining. I appreciate you. This microphone has nothing to do with that sound. This is for the other thing I'm recording. Um, but uh, yeah, we're out here. We're doing things. We're joining lives. I appreciate y'all. Um, yeah, I just need to start something over here and then we'll get to it. Um, oh, someone left already. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but it's all good. Because we're going to talk about being the fool. We're going to have that conversation uh, with people. One of them being ethereal effervescence. And yeah, this always happens. I'm like, yo, I'll do a video tomorrow. And uh, then I just think about something a certain way. I'm like, oh, I should just talk about that now. I got a whole train of thought going. Um, but anyways, let me start recording over here. Is this working? Let me check this out. Uh, but yeah, so welcome in Chaos and Misfortune was something I'm talking about with someone else. Um, I was like, oh, man, I could talk about that, too. Ah, you know, oh, man. It's usually when, like, numerous streams of consciousness come together in my mind. I was like, oh, okay, all right, I'll do a video. Like, I begrudgingly will do videos now on topics. So, anyways, uh, let me just make sure this is working. I always got to do test recordings, folks. I always got to do test recordings. Uh, but okay, let's start with Welcome Chaos and Misfortune, and then we'll get into uh, the Joker fool part of this discussion. Um, so I was talking to somebody, and you know, we're getting to know each other. A gal I'm getting to know, right? So, you know, I like people who can stand and will give answers to deep questions, right? So I've been just going and just, you know, here's where I'm at. I have a very deep perspective in consciousness. And so, I don't know, we, we got on the topic of something that I've, I've started to do, which is, um, you know, really exploring things that I don't like. I mean, I need to get a light in here. I don't know, I'm just in the shadows always. I saw someone's video the other day, <laughs> and they were, like, very brightly lit. Because I think since the light is, like, a little bit behind me, it kind of fucks up. I feel like it was a little bit more forward. In front of the, under that light, it would be better. But anyways, I'm getting off track here. Um, so we were, I was, I was bringing up how, you know, the practice of exploring what you don't like um, as a practice, because then you can understand your reactions um, and kind of your inclinations and your patterns, and you'll kind of understand more about yourself better. Because normally, what happens is, so aversions is shit you don't want, right? Ooh, get that away from me, aversion. Um, desires, ooh, bring more of that towards me. Yeah, bring, 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 right? Now, desires, in theory, are easier to explore, but there's a catch. Desires are easier to explore because you want them, but you'll just blindly do whatever the desire is, and you won't be mindful of it, right? But if you're going to something like, I know I don't like this, and I'm doing this to just as an exercise, um, okay, 11 or 12 o'clock in front of me okay all right good to know i don't know what that means for you right now i'll have to <laughs> figure that out later but i appreciate you for, for for commenting i'm trying to get my my whole media production game up you know but i just this sort of shit like i i really i don't really care about the production value it's more getting the the message out get the thought and the feeling out than necessarily if people can hear me that's the, that's the main thing but i do want to graduate to a better production standpoint just was well, just something in general um so anyways so you know exploring things you don't like your your aversions because this is the shit you really need to investigate your desires like you need to probably just tone that down a lot of times it's like oh okay like you always buy a slice of carrot cake every day after work okay let's let's tone that down to maybe one, but it's not even necessarily toning it down. That's the wrong word for it. It's more 
If you're going to buy a slice of carrot cake every night, then you have to do it with full mindful attention. Not because it's just what you've always done, not because you like the taste, with full mindful full awareness of what you're doing, right? Not just you carrying out a pattern. So um, when you can kind of explore what you don't like, you can understand just the patterns that your mind will inherently come up with, with shit you don't like. But the funny thing, when I really started working on this, I found out one shit that I thought I necessarily didn't like. I don't know why my nipples are hard people, but just, hey, you know, whatever. Occult science gets me a little, uh, you know. Um, you know, when I started to realize, all right, get a ring light. Jeez. Y'all, this is the best this now. I appreciate y'all. I'm just, I'm just fucking around. <laughs> Now I'm going to get, um, not a, I do want a ring light, but I, I just need to get like a little, like they have a square, like light box sort of thing. They can actually change colors. It's real cool. I need to get that. And also I need to just start using my DSL, DSLR camera. Uh, but it's like, I have no way to use that for Instagram. So that doesn't really help. So actually, I guess if I'm doing Instagram, I would need a ring light or something, but I guess I could have that light on the camera and just have it. Okay. All right, I see, this is why I have the phone turn around sometimes, so I don't get thrown off by all these comments from y'all. No, I appreciate the comments. Thank you for tuning in. Anyways, so yeah, so exploring what you don't like, you know, just in healthy settings. That's why I was thinking about kinks the other day, because there's a story related to that and, and someone I'm talking to, actually the same person, um, where it's like, I think of myself like, ooh, I want to be dominant and things like that. But there is a certain insight and wisdom you can get from being submissive or essentially like, I don't want to be restrained and dominated by someone, right? But the fact that I don't want that, I want to explore that. So then when it happens, I can like, I like, I understand how my mind works, right? In that situation, it's more of a controlled situation. So then... When there's a situation where I am actually restrained, not saying like I'm being held hostage or kidnapped, but maybe I feel restrained, right? I've dealt with my mind in that situation, so I know how it's likely to react, right? Um, you know, and that's extreme version doing kinks, but I think that is, although I don't think necessarily many people do kinks like that, that's the way I look at it. It's a way to explore things that you may not on the surface be like, oh, I want to do that. But it's about like when you're in that situation, what happens? How do you react? Like I feel like I'd be just such a, a, a I don't even know. I'd be like fuck you. Like I'd be so silly. I'd be, you know, um, I would get beat <laughs> so much by my top. <laughs> um, but I would understand like in this situation. Oh, this is how my mind is reacting. Like this is how it's dealing with this pain, this uncomfortableness, uh, this this restraint, this. Uh, uh, verbal abuse, whatever the fuck is happening, I'm understanding how my mind is processing that. And for everybody, it's going to be different. Now, there'll be common things where it's, uh, you know, most people, you know, if they're in a certain situation, they're going to be, they're going to have a certain level of reaction. Um, you know, I was reading this Buddhist book, Way of the Bodhisattva, and I was talking about how people's reactions are so, so predictable. Like if you, you know, if you compliment someone, they smile. If you stomp on their foot, they're like, Hey, fuck you. You know, um, we have some very predictable reactions for, for most things. Now it's very nuanced with how you kind of throw your own personality into, uh, into, uh, hold on. I'm just starting a recording over here. How do you throw your own, personality into it but inherently you got to study just the shit you don't like for example i don't necessarily like sitting in places to eat i mean if i'm with people sure but if there is an option to get takeout and bring it back to my location or even eat it in a car i much prefer that option so you know what i did the other day i forced myself to eat it at this place in east hartford that was like so white in there and that did, did help me, but and I knew that going in. I was like, oh, okay. Um, and it's not necessarily, but it's like, I was going to say, it's not necessarily about torturing yourself. But why is, I wasn't actually torturing myself. Even if I was actually torturing myself, why am I reacting this way? Right? You could say kinky, exploring some kinks is subjecting yourself to a certain level of torture and abuse. And 
and enjoying it, and, but also seeing how your mind reacts. So, in addition to that, um, you know, I was talking about like the, the Buddhist trick, as I put it, of welcoming chaos and misfortune, right? Because think about it, impermanence, right? Shit is always changing. Shit is always, oh, you thought it was this way today? Oh yeah, yeah, it's just that comfort zone. It's like, oh, you thought this thing was so solid, this relationship, this person, this this job, this uh, uh, whatever the fuck. You thought it was so solid, like, yo, we could set our clock to it, that's the thing, and then the next day, it's not that. That, my friends, dear ladies and gentlemen of the occult audience, is what we call in the business impermanence. Shit is always changing. That's why one of the dumbest terms that I will always rail against is permaculture. Because for one thing, we don't need permanent culture, all right? And secondly, where where's that Egyptian culture? I mean, you could say it's like still sort of around, but the actual culture isn't here, right? Okay, I mean, we could get like a little mystical and say, well, they've always been here. They're in another dimension. Okay, yes. But you get you get my, my points that permanent culture, it's such a dumb, dumb term. There should be, it should call be like sustainable systems or some shit that sounds very dumb too but it's better than permaculture in my mind uh because shit is always changing there's no such thing as uh, as anything being solid you just gotta get that out of your mind that's the sweet talk that parents and governments and, and corporations feed us that oh we you just need this this bill just needs to pass. This whatever, whatever needs to happen, right? But in the grand scheme of things, it's always impermanent. They could pass the bill, and then they could be like, oh, well, the Supreme Court said that bill is fucked up, so we're taking it back. But the bill, nope, nope, that was a fucked up bill. Nope, can't keep that bill. <laughs> you know, this is the impermanence. Shit is always changing, right? Like, I worked at the Hartford Public Library. I didn't work for the library. I worked at the library. Key distinction. Um, but a pipe bursts on Christmas Eve and it's closed for six months. Uh, and people ask me like, well, how do you tell? I was like, in permanence, folks. In fucking permanence. Shit is always changing. That's why when you welcome in the chaos and misfortune, right? Just say, hey. it's like, bring it on, bitches. It's going to happen anyways. It's going to happen anyways. And that's like kind of what Buddha was getting at. Like, you know, all the suffering, Right. I wouldn't say that's necessarily true. I think there's a lot of suffering, but there's a lot of suffering because, due to shitty mindsets and thinking shit is so permanent, that being the one of the most important things, like, well, this shit's solid, so, ah, I can just relax. This shit is so solid and permanent. Ooh, I could let my guard down. I don't have to be mindful. This shit's gonna be here. It's gonna be just like this. I'm gonna have this job forever. I'm gonna have this relationship forever. Th nothing's ever gonna change. That is people's mindset. And it's the biggest reason people have fucking mental breakdowns, I would say. This is other shit. Is that they think shit is so permanent when it's not. Adaptability, I think, is one of the most important characteristics that anyone has in their tool belt. Because it's just when shit changes, you could just like, oh, oh, we're we're dancing bachata now. But we're doing doing line dancing. You're like, no, okay, well we'll just dance bachata now. It is what it is. And you know, you start doing your bachata steps. You don't, you don't sit there like, wait a minute, like, I, I, I didn't, what song is this? Uh, like, no, cause you, <laughs> you, no, no, you just gotta start dancing, right? You just gotta start dancing. And when the song changes, you, you dance to something else. But ultimately, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you welcome it in. Like, you know, it's like, oh, it's like I've heard, uh, like this. It's like you, if, if, if your mind or if your life is a house, um, when pain and misery show up, you welcome them, in, you welcome them in, but you just don't serve them tea. You know, you know, you don't get them, you know, uh, enable them. So they hang around longer. <laughs> That's not what you want, but you know, they're going to come knocking on your door. It's inevitable. It's part of impermanence. It's just like inevitably you're going to die. Inevitably you're going to have your share of heartbreak and heartbreak and heartache and sadness and misery in addition to joys and, and successes and cheers and, you know, positivity. You know, it goes both ways, but we kind of lose sight of the uh, impermanence when it swings back to, you know, to misfortune and chaos. Uh, but, you know, if it's going to be ordered where it's like, oh, wow, I got the grants. Order. Then it's got to swing back like, ooh, 
I'm bankrupt. Chaos. <laughs> you know? It's a pendulum. And it's like we're riding this wave. We're riding this wave out we're on this wonderful, wonderful cosmic pendulum on Malkuth, the Mirage, the Matrix, the one and only. <laughs> Malkuth. Ah, <I> yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, Malkuth, we love you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, Matrix Mirage Malkuth. Ah, oh, we love you. Not really, but, you know, we're here. We're making the best of it. So you welcome in the chaos and misfortune, right? You welcome it in because it's going to happen anyways. So you just kind of like, oh, bring it on, bitches. Bring it on. Right? Like, you don't actively go out and, like, pick fights with people. But it's like when you feel the chaos of misfortune coming, it's like when you feel like the trip started, you know, a certain sort of way, there's a certain surrender, right? That you gotta, you gotta give into, right? You gotta surrender. If you fight it, you don't wanna fight. You know, you don't wanna fight the, the fungal teachers, the plant teachers. They'll beat your ass, okay? They're, they're in the other world, but you're here, okay? You don't fight. You surrender. And yeah, that's kind of what it is. It's just you render to the chasm of fortune that is just, I've heard it put you, everyone gets their, their shovel full of sorrow, right? In this world, everyone gets their shovel full and you deal with it, right? But don't act like it's not going to come. You know, don't like, act like, well, we'll be all right. <laughs> no, you know, nothing will come. Um, you know, but this is why dealing with your own bullshit leads to when things come to you, it's like less toxic and full of bullshit, right? You've, clean, you've cleaned up your energy, so then the chaos and fortune that befalls you, it's, you know, the very least going forward, it's just past energy <laughs> that you just left out there that wasn't the cleanest, right? And, you know, just kind of comes back around. But, um, but yeah, yeah. Um, you welcome in the chaos and misfortune. It's the old Buddhist trick. Um, you know, and there's a... I was trying to see what the rest of the title was. Because <laughs> I forget sometimes. Um, you know, and there's a, there's a term in Buddhism also. Uh, Lo Zhang slogan where it's like... Uh, victory and success to others and... Loss and misfortune to me. Right? And it's an underlying thing that, first of all... This is my interpretation. First of all, no matter what, success and, uh, you know, fortune, they're fleeting things anyway. So it's like, yeah, you have them one day, but then tomorrow, okay, you're riding that wave. And then at one point, it's, are, you, are, are, are you over that success? And it's just like, okay, and... Um, there's nothing wrong with success and achievement or something, but it's just part of a wave, just part of an up and down. Um, so, uh, so, you know, cultivating a mindset where, you know, misfortune is, is, is welcome. It's very radical. It's a very radical way of going about things. And in practice, it can be very difficult. When the chaos and misfortune shows up, now I'm like, oh. Like, I want to do this, but, oh, I know I got to go this way. Because I know the pattern. I know the pattern of my mind in certain things. That's why I want to expose myself to more extreme things, more extreme psychedelics, more extreme kinky things, so that I could further see how my mind reacts to things. And then I'll understand more about other people, too, because that's how it works, folks. You don't have to leave your house. You can know the whole world, because if you know your mind, you know everybody's minds. More or less. Um, you understand how the mind will do what it will do with lots of evidence to do what it does or little evidence of what it, to do what it does. What I mean do what it does, like courageous bullshit. Just create ego mind problems for you. Just be like, ooh, yeah, that bitch is talking about you. Oh, yeah, you should fucking slap that hoe. Right? You know, or just like, oh, you are a piece of shit. You, you, uh, that's what I'm talking about. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, you know, just like whatever bullshit that your mind is feeding you. And again, it could feed you sweet nothings and be like, ooh, yeah, you know, you're the greatest ever. Yeah, you are special. You are blah, 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 blah. Like all this sort of shit. 
but it's just, you know, it's keeping you, it's just, you know, our ego mind keeping us all, uh, all squirrely up there, all, uh, lo, 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 you know, not, not in actual reality, just focus on mirages. And sometimes they could be beautiful mirages, sometimes they could be horrific, painful mirages, but at the end of the day, they are just mirages. And yes, doing extreme things. It's easy now, me sitting here comfortably, like, yeah, that's all mirages. Then if I'm tied up and restrained and someone's beating me and then they give me DMT, you know, it's, it's gonna be a challenge to have that same energy. But this is why, you know, you do these things. So then it's like, oh yeah, I see how my mind does what it does when it's restrained on DMT. Oh, okay. <laughs> Got it. Um, so, you welcome in the chaos and misfortune. You welcome it in and you say, hey, what's up, chaos and misfortune? Chaos and misfortune be like, shut the fuck up. This is chaos and misfortune, all right? You don't talk to us like that. And at that point you say, hey, chaos and misfortune. You know, in this house, first of all, you got to take off your shoes. Second of all, um, you know, I don't like when you raise your voice. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know you're coming through. You visit everybody's house. I get it. But when you're in my house, have some motherfucking respect. Okay, chaos and res misfortune. Okay, have some motherfucking respect for my... This is my mind you're in, okay? Right? I'm not in your minds. But if I show up to your mama's house with that same little disrespect, chaos, hmm, what would you think about that? Exactly. You would be none too pleased. So all I ask is that you take off your shoes while you're in my mind and it's misfortune. <laughs> uh, <laughs> misfortune. Miss and Mr. Fortune. Um, but yeah, listen, Miss Fortune. Okay. When you're in my home, you take off your high heel hippie shoes. Do they have high heel hippie shoes? That could be a brand. It's like, hey, are you a hippie? But also, hey, are you a hippie? But also, you love high heels? I know, right? Hippie high heels. They'd be like made out of hemp. And maybe the heel would be a, would be a very hippie thing. It would just be a granola bar. <laughs> It would just be a granola bar. It would be like a reinforced granola bar. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wouldn't be just like a regular granola bar. That wouldn't hold. But it would be a reinforced granola bar in the heel. It would be made out of hemp. And maybe there would be... Hmm. I don't know. Heel boots. Hmm. But they, do they have granola bars in the in the heel? That's That's my question. That's my question. Hippie. Um, but anyways, Miss Fortune, when you're in, when you come to my house, you take off your heeled <laughs> your heeled boots, okay? Your heeled hippie boots. You take them off, and you you put them by the door. Yeah, you, you hang up your umbrella. And no, I'm not serving you tea, as we discussed. I'm not serving you tea, but we can chat while you're here. I'm not gonna run away to the backyard while you're visiting, like I did all those other times. I know, I know, that was rude. That was rude. Um, yo, Rainbow Crocs? That's what's up, I got, I got Marble Crocs. Marble Crocs! Um, but yeah, you just, you know, you don't serve chaos and misfortune tea when they show up at your house, but you woke up, well, you gotta bar the door? Because if you do that, then the niggas is going to just kick it down, okay? You know, it's, it's the, the thing that is just a, a good thing. Like, life is a mirage, right? Life is a mirage. So, when you pull something towards you, a desire, right? You, oh, give me that, right? If it, was a, if it was a rope, right? Eventually, it's a swing back, right? You got to hold on to it forever. That's desire. But if something's like, oh, I don't want that, you push it away. Or you keep your hand out forever, that's aversion. That's a swing back. So the trick is to not get caught up in the swinging forward and swinging back. Like, that's why I've realized with, with me and, and talking to women and flirting with them romantically, especially, like, 
online and, and things like that. Like in person, like it, it's 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 kind of different because you know you're talking with someone in person. You know, it's a whole different energy. But like you know, since it's like you know messages through apps and shit, it's like you know people get back to you when they get back to you, and you know, so like I can be very impatient sometimes. You know what I'm saying and. I have to always sort of, uh, I don't know, check my impatience and check like, what? It's like, dude, it's like, just chill. Like, chill, daddy. That's <laughs> one of my favorite videos. Daddy, chill. <laughs> daddy, chill. Who the hell is this guy? <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, just go online and look up daddy chill video. That's probably what we'll, we'll what will come up. I don't know if it's fake. It's probably fake, but it's just, it's very funny to me. And it's very short, but it's just very funny. Um, so, in welcoming this misfortune into my life, or not into my life, but uh, just this, this premise. I don't know where I was going before. Again, as I've talked about, train of thought, and then it becomes like the goddess muse spaceship. Um, coming back to the train of thought, it's like, the train of thought is still in fucking uh, Denver. The, the, the goddess muse spaceship is in fucking Dimension 33-9, okay? Like, it, you can't even come back to find the train of thought. I'm in a whole new area code. <laughs> I'm in a whole new area code, folks. So, I don't know where I was going with that. But anyway, so you welcome in chaos and misfortune. Now you say, hey, chaos and misfortune, sit down, not making a tea, and then, you know, oh, it's time to go? Okay, great, get out. <laughs> um, and so, you know, kind of exploring kinks, exploring different things about oneself is a way to kind of bring about chaos and misfortune. Being tied up and tortured and beaten doesn't sound great on the surface, but, but... It could be a healthy exploration of one's mind and body and sexuality, you know? So, uh, I wish I could see my thing. Why can't I see my thing? Just show me my title so I can remember the title. Oh, there it is. Uh, welcome to Chaos, Misfortune, Being the Divine Fool, Exploring What You Don't Like. Okay, so yeah, I guess I talked about exploring what you don't like. I talked about, maybe if I put this up like this, is that better? No, I'm still in the shadows. I feel like that's slightly better. Am I still in the shadows? I don't know. Who cares? I'm really, for someone who's talking about mirages, I'm really getting caught up with how the mirage of me of this video looks. <laughs> but this is the hilarious part about the mirage. It's it's like, you know, like Einstein said, uh, reality is a illusion, albeit a persistent one. It's a persistent illusion that we often fall into really believe in that. It's really solid. Wow, this desk is really solid. This camera is really like, huh, I really believe this camera's here. So anyway, so let's talk about being a divine fool. So we'll do some reading here. Do a little reading. Actually, do I have to do reading? I don't want to do reading. I don't want to do reading. We're just going to talk about being the divine fool. So, I was reading a book, which I'm not going to read to you. But just know I was reading a book. <laughs> no, I'm just fucking around. All right, all right. Okay, so. Illustrated Encyclopedia of Traditional Symbols. So, the fool. Okay, I'm not going to read all this. I'm just going to read the highlight section. The king symbolizes the forces. Oh, let me move my microphone back because I am recording something. <laughs> um, the king symbolizes the forces of law and order. The fool, those of chaos. Hence the license the fool or jester who could say or do what he please. Now, that is sexy. And when you really think about it, that is the power of it. Because it's like, you're not, you're not taking this shit seriously. You're not buying into the hoopla. You're not buying into the mainstream bloggity blah. 
right? You're like, this, this shit is insane. Why would I buy into all that nonsense? This is insane. You don't buy into it, right? But then what happens? Ooh. Like, I can only imagine people who see my videos, what they could possibly think about me, my views, my thoughts. Maybe they just see the title and they haven't tuned into the video because they're so scared. So scared of what he's saying and disturbed. Or maybe not. Maybe they're intrigued. Uh oh. Insufficient disk space. Oh boy. My disk space is insufficient. That's not good. <laughs> that is not good. That means I have a lot of shit on here. This is why misery and desire live together in Sandman the universe. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. Huh. Touche, touche. Yeah. Misery and desire. Yeah, they're they're butt buddies. <laughs> or siblings. They're butt buddy siblings. Well, that sounds disturbing, but anyways. To continue on, let's talk about being the divine fool, as we were discussing. So when you reject all the mainstream shit, reject all the hoopla and all the all basically you reject the mirage as being real. Right, you just and also you make fun of it. And you're like, you see what these niggas is doing? You see what they're believing in? Okay, well that's one way of looking at it. But here's how I look at it, and it's so outside of the mainstream, the collective acceptable consciousness that it's deemed foolish. It's deemed dumb. Are you kidding me? Is that a joke? That's what you believe. That's what you think about. That's the videos you're doing, right? I don't know if people think these things, but, you know, I'm speculating. But the point is, when you remove yourself from the mainstream, you're inherently going to be considered a fool. Because you're not going along with the bullshit. I mean, really removed yourself. Like, not just like, oh, ha, ha I wear vintage clothes. Like, no, 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 no. I mean, like, it was a vintage, vintage t-shirt I got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, you know, really removing your consciousness more than anything else from the mainstream, where, you know, there's nothing that can happen that necessarily will, will as sometimes it's put, take you off your square, knock you off your cushion, because you're so tuned into your being and your way of viewing the world, right, and viewing it from a a holistic, not a, you know, ego mind perspective, that you're, you're always going to be able to discern where you, where you need to go. This will be obvious because it's like, okay, you're not even taking mainstream in, in a, into account. Seriousness? Mainstream? Oh, oh, boo, boo. <laughs> that's why it's like, yo, that's why the niggas hire things. It's like everyone else be too scared to say, talk some shit to the kid, because he's the kid, he can kill me, right? Those jesters are like, yo, fuck you, you're fat. You fat nigga. <laughs> you fat piece of shit, that's the only reason you have a hot wife, fatty. <laughs> and maybe the kid be like, oh, ho, ho, yo, he's right, I'm fatty, that's the only reason I have a king, oh, ho, ho, ho. Or he's like, kill him. <laughs> it could, you know, it could go both ways, but... You know, I'm sure many of them knew that. It's like, what happened to my predecessor? Oh yeah, he made a he made a joke uh, to the king, and yeah, the king killed him. Wait, what was the joke? Oh, I don't remember. Anyways, go. <laughs> oh, I don't remember what it was, but uh, yeah, yeah, just uh, you know, good luck out there. But yeah, be careful. <laughs> be, just be careful. Um, I think it was a joke about his. I don't know. I don't know. Just. You know, just be careful. Feel them out, maybe, you know? Just just saying. But, uh, yeah, Jokers put themselves out there because they're saying they're taking a license. That's why license is a good word for it. They're taking a license to be like, um, actually, bitch, actually, this is what it is, okay? We're being the divine fool. We're saying what it is, right? Not, not everyone wants to hear some raw shit. Often, many people times don't, right? That's why I try to keep these lives and videos I do is as raw as possible, right? I don't need to edit this. 
where I just need to get into a flow state and start talking about things. Um, but yeah, I don't need to edit this, right? This is just a flow. I'm just in portal mode right now. But, uh, you know, it requires me getting out of my way and not taking it too seriously. Not taking anything I am saying right now in this life too seriously. Oh, I should have made that joke about whatever, being restrained, you know? It's like, what, who ca who ca who even cares? And that, not that that's necessarily a bad joke, but like, it doesn't matter and who cares? Because it doesn't matter and who cares? If someone cares, that's more of an issue with them that by me talking about that triggered and activated in them than, than I've done anything. That's another big trick in the Mirage, folks. I hope you're listening, Mirage Malkuth folks. You better be listening. If not, I don't care. I gotta say, I say stop saying I don't care, because that's not the wrong, that's not the right way of putting it, because I'll say like, oh, I don't care about that. I don't care about the mainstream. I don't care about this. But I just, in, I'll say that about some personal things in my life. Oh, I don't care about that. That's dumb. I don't care. I don't care. Uh, but I realized that it's like, mm, I don't like that energy that I, I don't, I don't care because I probably do care. I mean, I do care. And kind of, I guess the way I've sort of thought of reframing it in the past few days is, well, what, what do I care about? Focus on that rather than focusing on, well, I don't care about that, which may be true, but it's usually when I say it, it's like kind of like with a, an undertone of anger. So it's like, I don't believe it. it. Just sounds like you're angry at that thing, right? Like in the like mainstream is a good example. I'm, oh, I don't care about whatever celebrity or said. Like so, when someone brings up something that's in the mainstream that I don't know about or whatever, I'm like, oh, I don't care about that because it's like I'm angry that's even brought up to me. That's so dumb. I don't care about celebrities, right? But it, it's like the anger underneath that I need to deal with, and necessarily that someone, oh, that person had a baby, like. Why would I, why would that even bother me one way or another? The fact that I'm angered by it means I do care about it and there is something to it. And, you know, probably what I said is probably at least one reason that it's like, oh, that's such normally mainstream stuff that it's like, I'm, I'm, the fact that I even have to hear that is just such a waste of time to me that it, that it bothers me, right? We're trying to do occult things out here, not worry about celebrities, but Balancing all things, balancing all things. And you can be a cultist and still read People magazine. You know, that, that I'm sure there's many occultists out there who are like, ooh, what? Julia Roberts come out with a new film, you know? But I feel like once you kind of leave the normie life, especially with occult science, I don't know. I, I wouldn't think you'd be into that. But, you know, I'm, there's still plenty of things that are very Malkuthian that I still fucking love. <laughs> <laughs> I still love, you know, and there's nothing taken away from that, but just understanding my relationship to it is most important. Understanding my intentions with it, understanding why it tickles me or makes me feel a certain way um, is very important. Um, so even, okay, so I'll close it with this. So, so I was talking to, they said something that was very hot to me. Um, they were like, yo, um, you know, we we're flirting back and forth, blah, 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 this and that. And she was talking about being a switch and that she fights and makes people submit and then overtakes them. There's a woman, right? So just wanted to make that, that clear. Uh, although I said she, I, I suppose. And, you know, I was like immediately like, ooh, that's hot. But also I hadn't heard about this dynamic before. I was like, what? like fighting <laughs> and then I looked it up I was like oh no like some women like want you to not fight them like punch them in the face but like fight them and make them submit and tap out and like that's you know uh, what was the how was, what was the analogy I was thinking about earlier it's like the analogy of man what was the analogy um I don't know I, I don't know what the analogy I was thinking about earlier but but I was like oh that's really hot. And it was funny because I thought about it in two ways. I was like, one, at first, like my mainly ego mind was like, what? Because she's like, yo, you could try to submit me or whatever. I was like, try? Like, what? <laughs> so I instantly had an ego reaction based on that. I was like, what? 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 And it's not like she's like a bodybuilder, you know, and I'm, I'm strong. But, you know, someone gets into that zone. Well, they got leverage on you. 
Anything can happen, you know what I'm saying? That's why I play the game, essentially. Um, so, so it was interesting thinking about that. It's like, yo, that's, that, that's very hot. Like, I hadn't heard about this, like, sort of thing where it's like, fuck fighting, play fuck fighting, where it's like, whoever submits whoever gets to <laughs> gets to dominate them i was like oh i didn't know this was an option out there you know these are the things i'm learning and things i want to explore but so it was like one so it was like my reaction to like well she's not going to dominate me that was like the first thing that like i noticed in addition to finding it hot i was like oh well you know wh whatever whatever um then i was like you know and this is where the buddhism comes in and i'm like oh that sounds great yeah sure she can dominate me like let's let's see what happens Let's see what that's like. You know what I'm saying? Like how she'll do it, what it'll be like, how I'll react when it happens. I'm like, oh shit, she has me. You know, what would go down? Like I'm intrigued. How will I react? Will I be insubordinate the whole time? Like, fuck you, like spitting at her? I don't know. I don't know. This is why you play the game, folks. This is why you play the game. Um, so just in understanding that, I'm like, oh, okay. So in addition to like, ooh, I want to, I would like to make a run at dominating her and making her submit, right? It's like, well, I, what happens the other way? You know, it's, it seems like a very fun dynamic that I didn't know I was into until last night, you know? Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, it's all coming back to exploring the mind and understanding how your unique, beautiful, sacred mind plays and dances with you, without you in spite of you to get your attention and all the things in between and it's really hilarious and you know it's just whether it's some kinky shit i was just describing whether it's oh i don't i don't like going to that bank they're always this there go to that bank okay if they're always that at that one bank go there like that's why i love that rick and morty shit um where his the therapist he go to is like okay rick but you're a man of science Prove to me if you don't ignore all these, like, all these villains, these intergalactic villains that, like, it, it won't make it worse. And what he found out was when he ignored people, it didn't make it worse. And actually his, his life improved. And it was just a, a funny moment. So it's like, yeah, okay, go into that bank or that place where they always do this. They always do this to you. They explore that. And if they always do that, well, why does that bother you? Why does that bother you when that happens? Are you dead? Are you seriously injured? No, you're probably not. Because whatever that, whatever they always do at that place that you go to, probably isn't that big of a deal. And probably the mirage mind, the ego mind, is probably just come off some reason just piss you fuck off. Okay? It's not actually real. It's not actually legitimate. All right? And this is the shit you got to pro. It's probably the most occult shit you could do is understand how your mind reacts and how you respond to situations. Because then when chaos and misfortune fucking kick in the door on you, you can understand how you are going to react. You understand how you deal with those type of situations and you won't be surprised, right? I think that's what happens with people. They get surprised when chaos and misfortune come to them and then they really wig the fuck out, right? Because they had no prior training. And this is what this is all about, folks. Training your fucking mind to just s submit, <laughs> I guess, to use, you know, to keep that whole thing going. But not even submit. Like, because it's like a dance, even like something like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or what I was descri describing, play fuck fighting. Um, it's a dance at the end of the day. Is it like you're actually trying to get someone to submit because you want them to submit? Yeah, okay, maybe part of it, but it's like the play of it, it's the experience of it. It's like, you know, just the, the dance and journey of it and just, you know, that, that whole thing, right? It's not the destination, it's the journey, right? We always hear that. And same thing with any sort of experience. It's like, what, what are you experiencing while you experience? What are you thinking about while you experience? What are you feeling while you experience whatever you're experiencing? So that's it, I'm out. That was it. Hang my Colt jersey in the Raptors. I did it, did another live, put it in the books. We're out here, we did big things. Um, yeah, so, uh, so yeah, connect with your divine fool. Laugh at it, even if it's dark and mysterious and twisted and confusing. Just laugh. Laugh, laugh, laugh. And uh, yeah, welcome in the chaos and misfortune. You'll thank me later because it's going to come knocking. It does for everybody. That's just how it works, folks. Impermanence, bitches! All right.
Adieu.